Thanks sir, for inviting me. I'm sorry I'm not uh, uh, able to join you in Granada these days. It will be my first visit and a much cherished one. But at any rate, I hope uh, uh, we'll be able to give you a, a good perspective on what's happening in uh, in open science and particularly uh, with an eye toward astrophysics uh, with through the eyes of a project that I particularly at art, which is the ILIFU cloud computing facility. I am Mattia Vaccari and I'm a professor of astroinformatics at the University of Cape Town and at the Inter-University Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy. And I also serve as the university e-research director whose uh, role is to uh, provide services to accelerate research and uh, mostly through digital tools. So, Let's get going. So this is a slide that is not meant to be read in full, of course, and this is something that I came up uh, this morning as I was, uh, uh, well, trying to uh, trying to think whether I touched upon uh, all of the uh, all of the aspects that we wanted to address in such a talk. Uh, of course, I didn't, but uh, it, uh, it is instructive to uh, for uh, well before we engage on an African perspective to to see what ChatGPT makes of the challenges for open science adoption uh, in Africa. And uh, well, we'll be going through through a few of those. Uh, well, a lot of them, I mean, speak about limits, whether it is in funding, uh, in the awareness of, or in the expertise. Uh, some other ones, I mean, speak about uh, language barriers, which, uh, well, uh, not unlike uh, in Europe, can, can sometimes uh, make a difference. Intellectual property rights, I mean, across uh, uh, a continent that is, now, that is nowhere as unified as uh, Europe is clearly important, as well as a uh, uh, policy regulatory environment that needs to be put in place in order uh, to support science. So uh, we need a pact for between governments, uh, institutions of research and individual research so that uh, we can uh, uh, make the most of open science and its developments uh, across the world. Luckily, I mean, we have uh, uh, several experiences to be to build upon and uh, well, uh, not the least, I mean, the ones of the European Union and EOSC, and I will uh, mention it, I mean, a number of times as we go along. Now, for all of these uh, limitations, uh, some countries and crucially uh, my home, South Africa, has uh, jumped at the opportunity of uh, uh, being involved in some uh, leading uh, science projects, uh, big science projects over the past few years. In particular, South Africa has tried to leverage I mean, its geographical advantage by uh, placing big bets on sciences like astronomy, paleontology, oceanography, where uh, its geographical location provided it uh, with distinct advantages. And uh, well, as uh, uh, we like to call it, uh, phase zero of the SKA or uh, the Meerkat telescope uh, was built uh, uh, over, uh, well, the past decade by South African scientists and engineers and was completed on schedule and within budget. Uh, well, unlike uh, most other uh, telescopes in recent history in uh, uh, mid 2018. It has been uh, delivering transformational science, such as this image that we've seen in a slightly different incarnation in a previous uh, presentation this morning of the Galactic Center. And crucially, has been uh, built, owned, and operated by South Africa since day one, and it will be until SKA-1 comes along. Uh, so, uh, in uh, the bigger scheme of things, the, the timeline of uh, uh, development of uh, SKA uh, precursors and SKA-owned uh, facilities in the African continent is, uh, well, is summarized here. Uh, I uh, took a little bit of liberty, uh, liberty with dates, uh, of course. So the current Meerkat telescope that has been operating for five years uh, can, can be considered uh, the first 1% of the full uh, big vision of SKA phase two, and uh, perhaps I mean 10% of, uh, uh, of what the SKA phase one uh, will deliver. So this has been happening very rapidly. I mean, for um, for a country where uh, remarkably little radio astronomy was happening uh, over the well before uh, 2010, and uh, within in a matter of 20 years, will uh, bring I mean South Africa at the forefront of uh, of the field. 
this comes uh, with a non-negligible oops sorry this comes with a non-negligible uh, uh, challenge that uh, uh, that is uh, paramount i mean uh, that is important in, in all of our discussions about uh, open science uh, which is the growth of data volumes in radio astronomy uh, if you take a look at the uh, at this well broken fit uh, rough broken fit line here you can see that within the first uh, 20 years of the uh, of the century we we have seen a relatively modest increase in data sizes from uh, radio telescopes but uh, since the inception of the well the jvla upgrade and uh, the meerkat and dusk up these days and uh and going on into uh, the SKA phase one we've seen a much uh, rapid increase in this uh, exponential rate of uh, data generation capabilities and a large chunk of these data generation capabilities uh, uh, will be deployed, uh, are being deployed uh, in Africa, uh, a continent where until recently uh, data bandwidths uh, were very poor and uh, uh, data transfer always a challenge. This has uh, changed for the better, I mean, even within the well, the decade or, or little more that have been around in South Africa. And the the uh, the underlying uh, change i mean that we uh, that we started to tackle i mean some 10 years ago when i moved to the country was to uh, tackle the sociology well the, the change in sociology of radio astronomy radio astronomy more than anything uh, well perhaps more than most other fields i mean was uh, the last one to move from the uh, from the habit of uh, well uh, going to telescopes, uh, acquiring data, saving them on tapes or some other media, taking them back to your own institution and uh, reduce data on your own favorite laptop uh, with an obscure install of, uh, of software developed 30 years ago. Now, of course, much of the key science on, on route to the SKA will have to be achieved uh, via large scale observing programs that, uh, well, no individual or no single country can be expected, I mean, to be able to execute and uh, uh, exploit on its own, and will be crucially uh, carried out by a globally distributed teams of researchers uh, working on the data in a collaborative manner. So how do we achieve this and how do we uh, leapfrog uh, all of the advances that have been taking place in grid computing and in, uh, uh, well, uh, related fields uh, that, are, that are going to make it possible um, in Africa? Uh, well, we did that, I mean, uh, in our small way by establishing the Inter-University Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy, which is a consortium of uh, research institutions and of the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. And that was launched uh, in 2015, uh, and it was largely driven by the challenges uh, involved with Meerkat SKA data delivery, processing, uh, and mining, along with a multi-wavelength uh, um, astronomy strategy that leveraged uh, our involvement in optical uh, as well as in higher energy uh, gamma ray astronomy. Uh, now, the Meerkat uh, project, I mean, came uh, with, uh, with a number of uh, uh, key science goals that were uh, distilled into a number of key science uh, large survey projects, each, uh, each of which, I mean, uh, took more than a thousand uh, hours of, of Mirkad observing time. And uh, at IDEA, we have uh, focused on supporting uh, the, the South African-led uh, projects that uh, you can see in red here. And that span, I mean, from uh, H1 science to time domain astronomy to polarization and continuum from the very near to the very distant uh, universe. And, uh, and in order to do that, uh, we needed uh, an infrastructure that could be accessed uh, and that could support, I mean, uh, the whole country, uh, uh, even if the original seed funding was provided by a relatively tight-knit uh, consortium of university. So, uh, so the, the so-called ILIFU for the Easy Hosa local uh, language word for uh, uh, cloud uh, computing facility was rolled out sometime between 2018 and 2021, I mean, in a uh, rapid series of uh, steps. 
And it was originally funded, I mean, by a consortium of three universities, uh, the University of Cape Town, the University of Pretoria, and the University of the Western Cape, also based in Cape Town. But it's since been uh, topped up, as it were, by a large investment by the computational bioinformaticians uh, at the University of Cape Town and by the national government through the Data Intensive Research Initiative of South Africa. And uh, this was effectively the first uh, uh, cloud-based uh, uh, tier two facility, as we call it in jargon. So a domain-specific facility that uh, uh, can support, I mean, a large community of users uh, 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 and being uh, be dedicated to individual uh, research uh, uh, subjects. In this case, I mean, we picked astronomy and bioinformatics because, well, as uh, uh, as shown by COVID, uh, we we needed uh, and well, uh, and are still developing uh, large bioinformatics uh, uh, facilities across the country in order to be uh, first and foremost in uh, uh, being able to uh, to sequence. Uh, the genome of uh, pathogens, I mean, both existing and unexpected, uh, but also, of course, I mean, to uh, to prepare, I mean, for the uh, uh, for the challenges of uh, of the science to come. So, uh, ILIFO has been developed uh, as a relatively conventional uh, cloud computing facility based on uh, open technologies, and uh, the the two founding partners, IDEA and CBIO, uh, have shared their resources uh, by allocating them and uh, having them managed by the rifle by the relevant consortia, while the entire system is available to all partners within the country, uh, all the partners doing astronomy and bioinformatics, that is, uh, via a fair share uh, mechanism, so that uh, when uh, resources are not used, I mean, by key projects, I mean, they are rapidly allocated to, to smaller projects and to individual investigators as needed. Um, the this is just a, a quick summary of where we stand it's actually slightly out of date but this is just to show that uh, we did proceed them I mean, into a number of quick prototyping steps uh, like the african research cloud original prototype in 2015 the idea cloud in 2017 with the final deployment of uh, uh, of ilifu completed in 2021 uh, we are hosted by uh, our lead university, the University of Cape Town, uh, which is now connected uh, uh, at 100 gigabit uh, per second to the South African National uh, Research Network, and thus provides uh, out of our uh, bases uh, in uh, Cape Town, I mean, which is uh, the home of most of the deep uh, uh, sea cables uh, across uh, the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans, uh, extremely good connectivity to, uh, to most data centers across the world. Uh, I won't go into the technical details, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's enough to say that uh, there is, of course, a lot of complexity that is uh, that is built within uh, any modern cluster that can be uh, built. I mean, with uh, OpenStack at its basis and with the singularity containers. I mean, to uh, compartmentalize uh, software environments. Uh, we uh, well, we use I mean state of the art technologies, but crucially we use open technologies that have been developed I mean by the community and that are used routinely by the industry, so that we can uh, uh, stand on the shoulders of other developers, and we only need uh, a few experts that are going to be able I mean to stitch this together and to turn this into a mean uh, science machine. Uh, in terms of user interface, I mean, we have a few uh, from the uh, well, SSH uh, into the login uh, node so that we can launch uh, Slurm uh, queued jobs to the more uh, user interactive Jupyter Labs. And uh, we also have for advanced users uh, the possibility of actually running the OpenStack dashboard so as to create virtual machines that are suitable for individual uh, jobs and for uh, um, uh, for large groups, I mean, managing uh, their own resources uh, on uh, on our cluster. Uh, we, from our uh, humble starts, I mean, in uh, with the Idea Cloud in 2015, I mean, we have uh, rapidly been ramping up, I mean, supporting users from uh, uh, across South Africa, from across the world. This uh, plot is slightly out of date. It only reaches to the end of 2021. We now have more than 500 uh, uh, active users, I mean, uh, using ELIF, I mean, uh, every week or so, and more than 60% uh, of them come from South Africa, not only our founding uh, three partners, but uh, from, uh, well, uh, 20 uh, institutions across the country. 
the rest uh, of our collaborators uh, are uh, mostly coming from uh, countries that have got uh, a long history and a strong involvement with uh, South Africa, both in terms of human capacity development, but also in terms of radio astronomy and uh, the Mirkat large survey projects. And uh, since uh, the well, inception of our operations, we have always uh, exceeded uh, uh, our 80% computer target usage. So at every, uh, at every single time, I mean, more than at least 80% of our uh, uh, CPUs are in use uh, by some jobs or another, uh, while keeping, well, and this is uh, mostly achieved through automated, uh, through automated scheduling, uh, but also allowing for some job reprioritization uh, when, uh, well, uh, whenever uh, some urgent uh, uh, jobs, I mean, need to be carried out. So we do allow, I mean, for uh, for, uh, for, uh, for people to submit for, uh, some uh, urgent uh, data reduction requests, I mean, through, a, through an online form uh, whenever they desire. Now, uh, impact is... Uh, is a tricky thing to measure and uh, well uh, uh, south africa is uh, one of the signatories of uh, uh, different uh, uh, declarations i mean to change i mean the the evaluation of research impact but this doesn't mean i mean that we can shy away i mean from some of the most obvious metrics and uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, funding and uh, expectation i mean was built into ilifu so we we want to make sure that uh, our uh, researchers i mean publish and acknowledge us uh, uh, routinely this is a this is a measure of where we are at this stage i mean we have just reached uh, our uh, um our goal of 200 publications, which we were gonna uh, open I mean, to reach by the end of 2022. I mean, we were somewhat delayed, I mean, by COVID and the like. But uh, uh, what is encouraging is that perhaps uh, uh, more than uh, the sheer number of publications, I mean, the impact of, uh, of their publications, several of them, I mean, published in, uh, in Nature and achieving, I mean, many hundreds of citations per year is now really showing the power of uh, uh, collaboration between uh, uh, well, South African-led projects and uh, uh, for international collaborators. Um, we are we are also being uh, involved in uh, well, along with the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory and partners uh, from across the world, including the Newton Fund, uh, in a human capacity development program that has been uh, uh, started in 2018, and it has continued. I mean, through the harshest uh, days of COVID via both uh, online uh, participation and uh, uh, physically uh, and physically held schools. So the idea is that uh, we developed a set of uh, projects in uh, uh, agriculture, astronomy and health to get started, but now more in general, I mean, for all fields that are related to development. Uh, and uh, we have been uh, running this uh, uh, lately with, under the moniker of Hackathon for Development, and you can find a large number of acts that can be run within a matter of two to three days at this website and on our GitHub repository. So as to, and uh, uh, you are certainly welcome to get in touch with us if you'd like to collaborate on them, or if you'd like, I mean, to us for us, I mean, to organize schools along with some of our uh, some of your collaborators uh, across Africa or elsewhere. Uh, we've also been running separately um, in H3A uh, Bionet uh, Genomic uh, Bioinformatics Training Program, uh, which is truly Pan-African. I mean, at any given time, I mean, we are uh, we are running courses out of our UCT uh, headquarters. I mean, with hundreds of uh, um, registered participants from across Africa uh, involved in various uh, bioinformatics and genome sequencing programs. Uh, we've also been doing some, uh, well, old old school stuff, like uh, creating pipelines for automated uh, data reduction, in particular for Mirkat data reduction. Uh, our programmers have been busy in developing the so-called IDEA pipeline, which is uh, now publicly available, and that allows uh, automated reduction for both uh, uh, H1 continuum and polarization uh data streams and uh, this is all containerized and optimized for us for a for a cluster that not uh, unlike our own runs on open stack singularity containers and uh, the slurm uh scheduler uh and uh, well wherever possible we try and parallelize uh, using uh, both omp and mpi uh the different uh, code bits as needed 
Uh, we've also been working very hard on uh, uh, big data visualization. Uh, sure, we can reduce uh, uh, multi terabytes, uh, uh, multi petabytes worth of data, but we also need to, to be able to visualize it in order to do some old school quality control. And uh, uh, our CARTA visualization tool has been uh, uh, developed as the successor for the CASA um, visualizer. And uh, it's now been uh, incorporated within a number uh, of data groups of data centers uh, around the world. Uh, our well, our claim to fame is uh, uh, to enable cloud-based visual analytics of remote uh, large image cubes. I mean, multi-terabytes image cubes uh, that can be loaded in a matter of a few seconds. It was it was first deployed and it's still been aggressively. Uh, um, uh, developed on Elifu, I mean, with many thousands uh, of users, but it's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, adopted, I mean, by data centers at both uh, the, the NRA or the POSI data center in Australia, and so on and so forth. And it is one of the uh, early uh, tools, I mean, that we are developing for, uh, for the visualization of uh, SKA data within the SRCs. Uh, more recently, we became involved with uh, the EGI Foundation. Uh, EGI is one of the components, I mean, of the European Open Science uh, uh, cloud uh, uh, environment, if you like. Uh, the, the project we were involved with specifically is EGI Ace, whose, uh, whose main goal is to implement uh, the compute platform for EOSC, uh, as well as contribute to the EOSC data commons. Uh, our main task within this project has been to enable uh, uh, the federation between the AGI and the EOSC platforms uh, with ILIFU, so that South African researchers that are registered on ILIFU can have uh, access I mean, to EGI uh, computing facilities uh, and uh, to make sure that our radio astronomy software containers can be more widely deployed and used on infrastructure that uh, subscribes uh, to the EGI uh, federation. Uh, we are also we've also been working on uh, on a on a science gateway on a science platform of our own by bringing together all of the experience uh, uh, that we had uh, in developing the leaf infrastructure uh, and uh, on the experience of the original cyber SKA science gateway that was developed back in 2010. Our general idea is to provide them I in mean, uh, a configurable uh, dashboard where all of the different tools currently I mean we are we we have uh, uh, pioneered I mean, the adoption of uh, five of our crucial uh, tools in the dashboard, but it is to provide uh, a data centric approach. I mean, for uh, uh, for an end to end uh, uh, data uh, data analysis of Meerkat and eventually SKA data. And in so doing, I mean, we've uh, tried to incorporate some of the best uh, approaches. I mean, to open and re reproducible science by creating. Uh, uh, tools that the individual users can deploy to uh, create their own virtual environments so that uh, uh, they can be documented and reproduced when a user decides to uh, finalize their science project and, and to publish their data along with, their, with the software that has been used to, uh, to analyze it and along with the containers that have been used I mean, to run it on the infrastructure. Uh, but all of this was uh, is really preparation for what uh, we would like to uh, extend them I mean, into other domains across South Africa. I mean to uh, to take up some of the other science challenges in the field, and uh, we like to think of our uh, uh, idea slash Ilifu initiative as a uh, as a facility that is uh, driven by uh, university researchers, so that is uh, uh, res well. Uh, rapidly respondent, uh, rapidly responsive to the needs of university researchers, and, and uh, create uh, an innovation cluster in terms of software development that can then uh, be uh, more efficiently deployed uh, at scale, uh, in this case uh, at the National Center for High Performance Computing, which is our main uh, computing center in South Africa, uh, while keeping I mean, the flexibility of individual researchers being able to contribute to uh, software projects and to uh, data reduction projects on a somewhat smaller scale so as to pilot uh, more ambitious uh, projects to then be reported uh, on a more complex uh, facility. And uh, this is what uh, the, uh, the currently uh, ongoing I mean, dialogue between, so between EOSC and uh, this, uh, the so-called South African Open Science Cloud is uh, 
is entertaining the idea of uh, building on a on a dialogue uh, between uh, uh, well, idea and other partners across the country so that uh, building on the chpc in cape town so the the tier one cluster in cape town and uh, the tier two cluster that uh, ilifu has created i mean uh, to support astronomy and bioinformatics we can use uh, some of the same technologies to create uh, uh, different uh, tier two nodes, I mean, uh, to support uh, other priorities uh, in uh, the uh, science and technology uh, decadal plan for development that South Africa has embarked uh, upon starting in 2022. And uh, Along with these activities, we are uh, we've been looking at the harmonization of the uh, EUSA data protection regulation. We have uh, recently introduced the uh, uh, Protection of Personal Information Act that uh, uh, reproduces a lot of the GDPR prescriptions. Uh, we've started, I mean, uh, a program of data stewardship training. I mean, for you, for the uh, 20 universities across the country. And we are uh, uh, hoping to be able to contribute to the upcoming uh, African Open Science Platform, an initiative that was launched uh, last year and that uh, will try to deploy uh, similar nodes uh, devoted to individual disciplines, not only within South Africa, but within uh, Africa at large. And uh, OK, this is just uh, uh, this is a slide that was not supposed to be here, but uh, uh, it just uh, highlights, I mean, uh, that uh, the science, technology and innovation priorities uh, of the government and the societal grand challenges that have been identified, I mean, internationally uh, speak very much, I mean, to our proposed uh, uh, data nodes across the country uh, so that, uh, I mean, individual institutions with specific expertise uh, on uh, on the science uh, uh, involved with this in the different fields, I mean, can uh, can work on uh, on adapting the these open tools to their specific needs and developing uh, infrastructure that can be federated uh, with each other so as to maximize the sum of the parts of the investment that uh, the country can afford. But of course, I mean, as astronomers, uh, what we are really working uh, toward is uh, uh, the deployment of uh, the eventual South African SKA Regional Center. And uh, we uh, we are working on establishing that in partnership with the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory in Cape Town in order to support, uh, in particular, our African partners uh, in the SKA venture. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we entertain collaborations with uh, with other data centers, uh, and particularly those uh, that uh, are uh, in the running. I mean, to host SKA regional centers uh, or their subsections. I mean, across uh, uh, different countries, from uh, well, Canada all the way to Australia. Uh, the the last uh, uh, one of the last points I wanted to touch upon, I mean, as you can tell, I mean, I am uh, I'm very much, uh, uh, well, uh, somebody that is invested in uh, in computing and in data intensive research rather than uh, in the well, somewhat humbler aspects of research data management and support. Uh, as a matter of fact, though, the, the IFU project included a strong research data management component uh, that involved training and the deployment of uh, institutional data repositories at all of our university partners. Uh, we have managed to uh, to create, I mean, a South African library consortium and a consortium of institutional data repositories that are working together in order to create a set of best practices that can be adopted at the national level. And there, are, and there is now an increasing push to create uh, a national uh, data intensive uh, uh, research data archive so that different disciplines can discover, reuse and cite data sets that have been produced by African researchers without having to rely on, uh, well, the otherwise excellent services such as Zenodo, Figshare and so on and so forth. So uh, this is just uh, uh, well, a demo well, a demonstration of what, uh, well, uh, um, What's the word? Uh, a fru frugal uh, innovation, I mean, can provide, I mean, by making the most of, uh, of open tools. In some cases, we're using some proprietary tools uh, to, to manage some of the most uh, uh, discipline specific um, 
data, but by and large, we are uh, uh, making our uh, our data open. I mean, through infrastructure that is uh, that is running uh, on uh, on open uh, te technologies. Last but not the least, I mean, this is uh, this has been uh, the the way we we kept working i mean in a country that was uh, severely affected by uh, by covid and uh, by travel bans uh, for the better part of the covid pandemic uh, ilifu thankfully came of age uh, in uh, well some time uh, before the advent of covid and uh, our uh, tech support team was already working fully remotely uh, before covid it so this was uh, how i spent i mean uh, a few years working uh, with my students uh, this is the way i spent a couple of years working with my students working remotely with a bunch of collaborative jupyter uh, notebooks i mean running on uh, well millions and sometimes billions of optical uh, sources and uh, working on their uh, properties I mean, in order to try and characterize uh, the optical universe with, uh, uh, with an eye toward preparing for, uh, uh, for the advent of major radio galaxy service with the SKA. And uh, I can only stress, I mean, how uh, this uh, has allowed, I mean, staff and students, I mean, to collaborate on shared data, scripts, and notebooks without, uh, well, losing complete track of... Uh, uh, of time and of each other and how that uh, and how the software installed that is routinely managed by our support team uh, but where users can also create their own virtual software environment and software containers if they so desire uh, has enabled uh, us uh, to uh, to keep churning out science and to maintain uh, our mental health in uh, through a distributed research community during COVID times. So I think this is uh, extremely instructive, I mean, for the days to come when uh, SKA will have to bring together a truly global uh, uh, well, workforce and a truly global research collaboration from many different cultures and uh, from many different countries while trying, I mean, to reduce our, uh, uh, our impact on the environment and on the climate. So uh, I haven't had uh, done uh, any justice to our uh, colleagues working in bioinformatics and in space sciences in my talk, and I apologize for that. I only had so much time, and I thought I would focus on what was most re relevant for uh, for the for the attendees at this school. But uh, uh, I'm very happy to to add some of our highlights. I mean, to the final versions of the slides that I will be sharing in uh, in on Slack and as well on the school website. So uh, I will stop here, uh, but I would just like to, yeah, to point us to point you to uh, one opportunity uh, to join us in uh, the so-called mother city. We currently have five postdoctoral positions uh, with our group uh, with the deadline of 2nd of June, 2023. You can find details at uh, this website. Uh, opportunities range from uh, the very nearby universe, from time domain astronomy to uh, galaxy, uh, uh, well, galactic variable stars observed in the radio and in the optical to H1 uh, galaxy continuum, uh, extragalactic continuum, and extragalactic polarization studies. So please have a look and share the word. I mean, with your colleagues uh, if you're interested. Uh, I will summarize uh, here what I uh, what I hope uh, I try to convey and I managed to convey rather well. I think uh, the key uh, the key point I'd like to make is that uh, uh, Ilifu uh, was built up within a man within a matter of uh, of a decade. I mean, after a dedicated uh, effort. I mean, by a few universities, and, and it has actually captured. I mean, the the imagination of many hundred of South African and international researchers, and is currently providing the uh, uh, main engine, I mean, to produce meerkat science. So it is effectively, I mean, uh, uh, a little prototype uh, SKA regional center uh, from day one and provides ample opportunities for, for collaboration with uh, uh, foreign partners, I mean, in both cloud infrastructure, uh, machine learning, visualization, and human capacity development. So I'll stop here, and uh, I hope I didn't uh, uh, keep you from lunch for too long. Thanks. Can you hear me now a bit better, Mattia? I can hear you now. I couldn't hear you at all now, uh, previously. 
Um, before folks on Zoom and in person run away for lunch, just a heads up that after uh, Matthias Q and A, um, we're going to take a group photo. But first, does anybody have any questions, either the, from those of you on Zoom or anybody in person, have any questions for Matthias? Uh, Susanna. Yes, when I see this capacity program, uh, uh, skills capacity program, I was wondering if open science is playing a role there in not as a topic or a subject in the training program, but as a mean in the sense that you are using this capacity program, open data, open tools, more this kind of thing. Can you can you tell us about that? Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, we are uh, admittedly we are more uh, focusing on uh, on training uh, data scientists uh, if you like or data science skills uh, or providing data science skills i mean to to students particularly those uh, who come from uh, from countries or from institutions where there is no dedicated data science program so we are using uh, uh, open technologies uh, like uh, pytorch and scikit learn uh, and uh, and the like uh we are uh, also uh but but we are running i mean most of the most of our uh, workflows on on elifo so that students i mean can be can be able to run i mean large workflows i mean within a small matter of time uh we are not uh 100 uh, there in terms of research data management uh, and particularly reproducible reproducible code um, and software sustainability training uh, but we would like to add that i mean to to our offerings of course we use uh, well github and zenodo for sharing our code bases and uh, to work with students during the schools particularly when they are remotely but i think there is still uh, quite a lot that needs to be done uh, particularly when it comes to uh, to training uh, uh, students outside uh, astronomy which where we are not doing too badly uh, about the practices of uh, open science and the reproducible science are there any other questions anybody on zoom have any questions I have one question. Uh, thanks, Matia, for the, for this talk. So you were talking before um, about the integration with EGI and the federation federation with uh, the Euro European Open Science Cloud. So I would like to I would like to know your opinion on whether you think that uh, somehow this federation between the South Africa and later the African uh, Open Science Cloud and the European science cloud and maybe other clouds in the in the future i don't know if it, if you think that uh, somehow the ske renal network can build on top of that federation yeah that's an excellent question when uh, when we when we started the the this egi well when we got involved with the egi ace project uh, there was a question as to whether I mean we were preempting I mean something that uh, the SKA regional centers uh, should have decided upon in the first place I guess we we decided uh, to run with it and to see uh, where that would lead us because we felt that uh, developing uh, technologies that could be reused I mean could only be beneficial and uh, I'm not involved uh, um, in first person uh, uh, in uh, in the SKA regional center well data management and uh, uh, infrastructure uh, conceptualization uh, but I think that there is a lot of prog there is a lot of uh, promise in exploring different routes so not uh, as in so many other cases I mean I don't know what uh, the SRCs uh, will uh, will adopt but uh, I can't think it would be I can't I can't imagine it would be something substantially different I mean from the number of things that people have been trying out over the years so for our for our sake we wanted to develop skills uh, and uh, cloud engineers that knew how to run these things at scale and uh, well that was all that was not only i mean to create a, a court of people who knew how to do that and that we could retain in south africa so as not to lose skills but also to support the burgeoning industry of uh, of data science and cloud uh, engineering that is uh, developing in south africa very rapidly now uh, during and after covid so I think uh, uh, that that's a long way to, uh, way to say that uh, I don't know, but uh, I sure hope so <laughs> that we can work uh, with similar uh, uh, engine with similar tools and uh, make uh, the most of them. I mean, both for for SRCs and for the African Open Science Cloud. Thank you. 